Hey there everyone, Ramesh here back again with another video. In this video, we are going to talk about Spring Boot Auto Configuration. Well, we are going to understand how Spring Boot Auto Configuration works behind the scene. Alright, so let's take a look into the agenda of this session. We will first see what is Spring Boot Auto Configuration and why do we need Spring Boot Auto Configuration. So we will see the example without Spring Boot, how you know the Spring applications looks like and what configuration we can automate and then we'll look into spring boot auto configuration so basically we'll take a look into the theory theoretical part uh, three to four minutes and then we'll see practically how spring uh, spring boot auto configuration works okay so we'll create we'll see the example in spring tools with id and we'll explore how spring boot you know auto configuration works internally and then we'll see various Spring Boot Auto Configuration classes are implemented. Okay, so there is a one jar file over there. You can find all the Spring Boot configuration classes. And in this session, we are going to take an example of Spring MUC. So we'll first see Spring MUC project without Spring Boot, and we'll identify what are the configuration we can automate. And then we'll see the same project in Spring Boot. Okay, and we'll explore how the Spring MUC configuration is automatically provided by spring boot and how the dispatcher servlet is automatically configured okay we will see a lot of stuff guys all right so without further ado let's get started so spring boot provides auto configuration feature and this is a very very important feature so as a beginner you have to understand spring boot auto configuration in order to you know in order to explore how Spring Boot works behind the scene. Well, what is Spring Boot Auto Configuration? Spring Boot Auto Configuration attempts to automatically configure your Spring applications based on the jar dependencies that you have added in the class path. Okay, so Spring Boot Auto Configuration it you know automatically configures your spring based application based on the dependencies or the jar dependencies that you provide in a class path well before you know exploring spring boot auto configuration let's first take a look into why do we need spring boot auto configuration so if you have already worked on spring framework or spring based applications then you have seen that spring based applications have a lot of configuration okay so let me show you a spring based application without spring boot so look at here this is spring muc hibernate crude web application so this is the project i have developed using spring muc hibernate okay i haven't used spring boot in this project and you can find this project on my github profile so go to spring muc tutorial and in this tutorial repository you can find spring mc hibernate crude web application project well in typical spring mc hibernate project we need to configure a lot many things for example so this is a java based configuration and in application context configuration file you can see a lot of beans created manually for example session factory if we use hibernate in spring mc application then we need to configure these three bins that is session factory bin data source bin and then transaction manager bin okay if we don't use spring boot then we need to configure these three bins if we use hibernate in spring mc okay so this is in all the typical spring mc applications okay these three bins should be configured so apart from that uh, we are using uh, you know we are using a JSP or Timelip. For that, we are also need to configure Weave Resolver, right? So that I have defined in WebMUC config class. So look at here. In this project, I have used JSP, so I have configured internal resource Weave Resolver for JSP. So this is a typical bin we need to configure when we use uh, you know JSP or Timelip as a view a layer. So apart from that, we need to configure dispatcher servlet. So there are different uh, approaches to configure dispatcher servlet. Like either we can configure dispatcher servlet in web.xml, that is deployment descriptor, or we can you know configure dispatcher servlet using Java-based configuration. 
okay so just understand like without spring boot we need to configure these bins for spring msc project so this is the typical configuration okay you, you can develop any kind of spring msc application and if you are using hibernate then you need to configure all these things when we use spring emuc we need to configure component scan dispatcher server v resolver web jars and other things and let's say if we integrate hibernate or jp in our spring emuc application then we need to configure data source bin entity manager factory or session factory bin and transaction manager and other things in our kind of spring emuc application we need to configure these things why not we, we automate you know these configurations so instead of writing this configuration in all kind of spring msc application again and again why not we automate these configurations well spring boot you know team has uh, you know comes with this new thought process they have automatically you know configured all these uh, all these configurations so whenever spring boot finds spring msc dependency in a class path then spring boot will automatically configure component scan dispatcher server view resolver and if we add spring data jpa or a hibernate in a you know in a class path then spring boot will automatically provide the data source bin uh, entity manager factory or a session factory bin and transaction manager all right so spring boot auto configuration basically you know configures all these configuration for us whenever spring boot finds spring msc dependency and hibernate dependency in a class path so this is the best example for spring boot auto configuration now it's time to you know explore spring boot auto configuration in an action and we'll also see where is spring boot auto configuration implemented well let's head over to spring tools suit id okay go to format xml file and you can see here spring boot starter well this is the dependency that we use to run our spring boot application as a standalone without uh, any server so now in order to explore spring boot auto configuration in action what we want to do is we want to add spring boot starter web dependency here so we use this dependency to create a web application or restful uh, application okay all right now in order to explore the spring auto configuration you know in an action what i will do i will go to application.properties file and here i will add one log log level statement that's logging level dot spring dot you know spring framework dot web equal to debug so we are going to see all the debug statement for this package that's why i have added a debug uh, you know as a logging level for this package now what i'm going to use i'm going to run our spring boot application run as spring boot app so as we have added spring uh, you know spring boot starter web dependency in a class path so spring boot will automatically provides embedded tomcat server uh, as a default uh, you know container so look at here our spring boot application is up and running in embedded tomcat server on port 8080 all right and if you can see here spring boot has auto configured a lot of stuff for us for example it by default it provides a dispatcher servlet whenever we add this dependency in a class path and apart from that uh, it will provide embedded tomcat server so look at here embedded tomcat server the application is running on port 8080 and apart from that uh, it provides you know request uh, mapping handler okay it will configure request mapping handler mapping bin for us and then adapter bin and it starts the application context okay and uh, lot of stuff guys it will configure controller advisor bins uh, it will enable all these annotations all right it will configure basically a lot of stuff for us and in order to view whether the dispatcher servlet uh, auto configuration is enabled or not so for that what i will do i will change the log statement for example go to application dot properties file and here i will just remove dot web and i will just you know run the application and let us see whether a dispatcher server auto configuration is enabled or not when we add spring boot starter dependency in a class path okay 
now if you can see here there are a lot of uh, you know statements log statements printed in a console okay now let's explore uh, about the dispatcher servlet so i am going to just search for dispatch here yeah here we go so dispatcher servlet auto configuration class matched okay so as we had it spring boot starter web dependency in a class path so dispatcher servlet auto configuration class should enabled and look at here the important annotation add conditional on class annotation so this annotation is you know responsible to enable dispatcher servlet auto configuration class so this basically annotation what it will do it will see whether a dispatcher servlet class is available in a class path or not okay so if this annotation finds this class in a class path then this annotation will basically enable dispatcher servlet auto configuration class okay understood just remember this annotation add conditional on class annotation so this annotation is basically responsible to enable dispatcher servlet auto configuration class whenever it will find this class that is dispatcher servlet class in a class path so as we have added you know spring spring boot starter web dependency in a class path so this dependency internally uses you know spring mvc libraries for example let me show you its internal code so look at here it internally uses spring framework provided spring mvc libraries spring web spring web mvc okay so spring boot is just you know uh, built on top of spring framework and it behind the scene uses spring mvc libraries or spring framework libraries okay great now you can go to maven dependencies here you can see spring mvc libraries for example look at here spring web mvc it is this library is belong to spring mvc framework and look at here spring web library spring boot internally uses these libraries so this is a very very important so look at here spring web mvc so this library contains this class okay that is dispatcher servlet class and add conditional on class is annotation which is responsible to enable dispatcher servlet auto configuration class whenever it finds this class in a class path okay and as we have seen here spring web mvc is present in a class path and it contains this class so add conditional on class enabled dispatcher servlet auto configuration so look at here matched matched means this configuration is enabled that is dispatcher servlet auto configuration is enabled so apart from that so look at here you can see a lot of things error mvc auto configuration is matched it means this auto configuration is enabled and apart from that uh, HTTP message converter is also enabled. Okay, by default, Spring MVC internal uses Jackson library to convert Java into JSON, JSON into Java object, etc. All right, so lot of stuff, guys. So whenever you find matched, it means that the respect to auto configuration class is enabled because we have added Spring Boot starter web dependency in a class path. Apart from that, look at here, REST template auto configuration class is enabled. Okay, and WebMVC, WebMVC auto configuration is enabled. And negative matches, it means that these are not enabled. Okay, because these, these classes are not, you know, found in a class path, hence these auto configuration classes are not enabled. So as soon as you add dependencies, and this class is present in that dependency then this auto configuration will enable so did not match means this auto configuration class is you know not enabled whenever you add a cassandra dependency in a class path then cassandra data auto configuration class is enabled okay similarly for couchbase similarly for elastic search so these dependencies we haven't added in a XML, hence these dependencies are not did not match 
or did not enabled okay so you can find all these auto configuration classes in one jar file that is called spring boot auto configure dot jar file okay now let us see where is spring boot auto configuration enabled so this auto configuration enabled in this jar file so all the auto configuration classes that we have seen right so these are all auto configuration classes like validation auto configuration dispatcher solid auto configuration security you know auto configuration so these all are you know spring boot auto configuration classes okay eop auto configuration class dispatcher solid auto configuration class so all these are auto configuration classes and spring boot will enable these auto configuration classes whenever it will find the required dependency that is required uh, you know jar file in a class path now let's go to spring boot auto configure jar file so this is the single jar file which contains all these configuration auto configuration classes okay so let me show you so just expand this dependency and you can see here different uh, uh, you know different packages for example if you go to dao you can see this auto configuration class and if you can go to couchbase you can see couchbase related auto configuration class and if you can see here jpa you can see jpa repository auto configuration class okay similarly if you can if you can go to web you can see spring data web auto configuration class and if you can go to rest you can see repository rest properties etc so all those spring auto configuration classes are you know stored under this jar file and these auto configuration class classes are enabled as per the dependency available in a class path or as per the class respective class available in a class path under web.servlet package you can see all these auto configuration classes and you can see here dispatcher servlet auto configuration class so whenever spring boot finds spring boot starter web dependency in a class path then spring boot will automatically configure uh, you know this auto configuration class all right and you can just go to meta inf here and you can see spring dot factories file so this file contains basically all the you know spring auto configuration classes spring dot factories okay so this file contains all the auto configuration classes and spring boot will basically pick up these classes based on the spring and based on the dependencies present in a class path so let's search for dispatcher servlet okay so this is a dispatcher servlet auto configuration class similarly you can find all the auto configuration classes inside this spring dot factories file all right i hope you understood how spring auto configuration works well spring boot will automatically you know configure spring based application where whenever it will find a dependencies in a class path so the best example we have seen is you know dispatcher servlet okay so we have added you know we have added spring boot web starter dependency in a class path for example in a pom.xml we have added spring boot starter web dependency right so once we add this dependency then we will get dispatcher servlet you know automatically added in a, our project so that is what we have seen here right in a console you can see here dispatcher server auto configuration matched matched means this auto configuration is enabled and who is the responsible to enable this auto configuration add conditional on class you know annotation is responsible to uh, you know enable this auto configuration whenever it will find this uh, this uh, you know class in a class path all right, it's pretty simple all right guys this is how the spring boot auto configuration works behind the scene and this is very very important once you under uh, once you understood how spring boot auto configuration works then it is very easy for you to work uh, you know with spring boot applications